Any decision to invest, including investments in education, can be understood using the mathematics of finance. And he had no experience Wendy Hayes has made a decision to forego her current earning potential and invest well, and in postgraduate education. And that person well, I'm uh, in my third year studying law. Um, and previous to my degree, I was working uh, in business uh, as a recruitment consultant, um, and I decided to go into a more professional uh, career, so I had to go to university. Um, after university, I'll be uh, at law school for a year. After that, uh, I've got a, a two-year training contract in London with a London law firm. Like every other student, Wendy has made decisions to invest that she thinks will pay off in the future. But is this true? Um, after you graduate, you have to either do the legal practice course if you want to become a solicitor, or the bar vocational course if you want to be a barrister. But they cost, in fees alone, probably eight or nine thousand pounds for the year. But as a result of that, she'd expect to get higher earnings in the future. She will indeed. As soon as she qualifies, her income will dramatically increase um, and will, will remain high then for the rest of her life. So you think Wendy's probably got it right? Yes, she has. But does this higher income justify the investment? Let's use the mathematics of finance to make certain. Is an investment in higher education worthwhile? The answer will be different for different students in different circumstances, but we can get some idea by looking at Wendy's situation, and we'll need to use discounted cash flow techniques to do it. If she were starting her undergraduate course now, we would consider the cost of all the years of her undergraduate education, both the tuition costs and the loss of salary in some alternative job that she could have done. But as she's already met those costs, they are sunk costs. They form no part of the cost considerations. But there are costs still to be met during her training year. She'll earn about the same as she would have earned in an alternative job, but she'll be spending 10000 a year on the study course itself. But if she successfully completes the course, she will expect to earn more as a result. We're estimating something like a 25% increase on the amount of money that she could earn each year if she had simply got her degree and left. So we'll say that that gives her an extra 5000 a year as earnings, but that's before tax. So realistically, she'll expect to earn an extra 3000 a year after tax. She plans to retire at 50. We need to choose a discount rate. Interest rates at the moment are around 6%, so we'll use that. So now let's look at the calculation for Wendy. Here's the cash flow that we have. We've written minus 10,000 in year naught showing her the additional costs of doing the law course. And then we've written down a series of positives in the cash flows of £3,000 per year until year N, which in Wendy's case will be in 25 years' time when she becomes 50. So we know that the cost of the investment is 10000 What's the benefit in terms of the increased cash flow. Well, if the cash flows were uneven, we'd have to do a large number of calculations, taking each amount, discounting it back to the present value, and then adding them together. But because we've got an even series of cash flows here, we can use the formula of a geometric series. A times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So here we have a is equal to 3000. r is 1.06 because we're assuming a 6% interest rate. And we've got 1.06 to the power 25, reflecting the fact that she's going to retire at 50. 1.06 to the 25 minus 1 
over 1.06 minus 1, which gives us 3,000 times 4.292 minus 1 over 0 0.06, which equals 3,000 times 54.87, which comes to 164,600. So given that her undergraduate years are a sunk cost, and that she'll only earn income until she's 50, she'll be investing £10,000 and getting back a sum over her career which has a current worth or a present value of £164,600. So since the discounted income exceeds the cost, it's financially well worthwhile to do the course. Now clearly the benefit of the course would be less if she'd done the calculations at the beginning of her undergraduate study, since the relevant costs then would have been much higher. Those undergraduate costs would not at that stage have been sunk costs. So we've investigated the worth of investing in a degree education using basic discounting principles. But a few things to note. We didn't take into account non-pecuniary benefits, the enjoyment of study, and the nicer job, etc. We could also have assumed that those real increases in salary would rise with age. Well, you can work out your own assumptions and then follow the basic principles to see if the decision to invest in your own degree education is a good one.